Hi and welcome back to this video lecture number 4.4 .4. with me Joachim Shevrestad. The lecture is on digital forensics and the topic we're going to explore now is called link files. Uh, so link files uh, is a way that Microsoft uses to track user activity uh, more especially what files and folder user is visiting. So essentially link files are shortcuts that are created whenever a user is uh, accessing a file or folder and as such they provide nice uh, forensic evidence of what files or folders that's been accessed in a system. Uh, and they actually uh, they actually do uh, contain quite a few pieces of nice information. So first of all, there are some properties we need to know about link files and how they work. Uh, the first one is that whenever a user is accessing a file, there is uh, this link file that is created uh, under recent items and recent items located in the user profile uh, under path uh, C colon user, username, app data, roaming, Microsoft Windows, recent. And then you will see there is a whole bunch of these link files that tells us a fair bit about what the user has done. So in this case you can see that there is a link file to open save test, last saved, some file and so on and so forth. And what this means is that this is files that the user has visited. So if I just real quickly uh, right click one of those and take properties, you can see that those link files are essentially uh, shortcuts. So it's a shortcut that points to a file and that's basically that. So what you can see from this link file is that uh, uh, see, is basically what file that it, what file a user accessed. And a nice, nice property about these link files is that they are user specific as they are stored in the user profile so you can actually tie the artifact to a user account. Uh, another nice way is that these link files as we will see in a little bit um, are created not only for files that are stored locally but also for files that are stored and uh, accessed through a remote folder uh, so we can see link files to remote storage devices or network shares uh, but also removable media such as USB devices so this really gives uh, gives us a nice overview of what the user has been up to what external storage devices that the computer has been used and so on and so forth uh, another nice property about link files is that they are not deleted uh, when a file is deleted or when a removable storage device is detached. Uh, so for that reason we can actually find evidence of storage devices that we have not yet seen uh, during our forensic examination. So let's look about how the link files are actually constructed. So if you look at them you can see that the name of every link file is actually the name of the file links to. So you can see here some file that I created previously is named just some file.txt and then there is a dot lnk extension that is hidden here. So uh, essentially you can see uh, you can see the name of the the file that has been opened which is very nice. Uh, there are also two timestamps that we need to care about and those timestamps are if we look at the general tab here the create a timestamp which indicates when the file was first accessed and also the modified timestamp which tells us when the link file was updated which is the time when the file was last accessed. So not only do we see that a file is accessed we can also see the first and last time that a file was accessed and this can of course be uh, important evidence because there is two things here. Uh, first of all we can see that a file has been used and depending on the file name there might be, might be some importance in that but we can also see uh, when it was first and last used, which can tell us a bit about how frequently it has been used. Because say that it is, say that someone claims that they downloaded some file of the internet, opened it once, and then never cared again. Uh, well, then we would expect the created and modified timestamp for the link file to be the same or roughly the same. But if we see that, uh, for example, like in this case, if I open last saved here and look at the properties and the timestamps, you can see that they are quite far apart, meaning that at least the user's been uh, opening the, this file on March 22nd and also again today on the 6th of November, giving an indication that this is a file that has been quite frequently used by the user. Uh, so this is the manual way of interpreting them. I'm, I'm also going to prove to you that they work as I said, so uh, if we just create a new file here uh, and we create a a rich tech doc 
text document, we call it something, and then we open it, and then you can see just instantly here how how the link file is being created. Uh, and now of course the link file will say that it was open that it was first created just now and it was also modified just now because this was the last usage of the link file uh, or the actual file and if we go in go and do something to some other file so we go into this open save test and we can just open this last open file here and we close it again and we can see that the link file for first created last opened uh, ends up on top here meaning that it was the last modified one namely the last open file so this is actually also a listing of what happened when you list the link files here on the date modified it's also a listing of what's been happening in the close future uh, so how many link files are being saved? Well, I'm not really sure and it seems to be a little bit different uh, in between versions of uh, in between w versions of Windows, but you can actually see here that we have uh, link files that are from March at least. This is a demo computer that's not being used that much, so I wouldn't expect too many link files anyway. Uh, so there are also ways that we can forensically work with link files. So m most forensic programs will have some support for interpreting them. Autopsy can do it, FTK can do it, I guess NCase can do it as well, and a number of others. Uh, there is also a command line tool that's been designed by our friend Eric Zimmerman, and that is called LECMD, and I'm just going to show it to you real quick. So it's a command line tool, so I'm using it through PowerShell, and the way you use it is that you use the uh, the syntax, just typing down the program name, lecmd.exe, then you can do dash f or dash d, dash f is if you want to analyze a specific file, and you can do dash d if you want to parse the contents of a, uh, of a directory, so, so you may want to extract all link files from the computer you're examining and just uh, parse through them all, but in this case we're just going to do one single file, that is this dogcat.png uh, and just hit enter and we're gonna have a bunch of information in a little while so I'm gonna show you some of the more uh, import, important stuff so if we are go from top to bottom uh, what we can see now we when we are analyzing the link file dogcat uh, we can see the timestamps again so we know when it was first uh, accessed from the created timestamp, we know when it was last accessed from the modified timestamp. Uh, if we move down a little bit you can see that we have relative path and working directory. What this will tell us is the relative path to where the uh, the source file, the, the donkhead.png was stored. And you can also see the working directory so you can see a definite path to where it was stored. Uh, and this is where you may want to see, you may want to cross-reference this result to the partitions that are present on the computer. So in this case, the working directory is C colon, so this is nothing nothing weird. We can see that it's on C colon, the system partition, nothing weird there. But maybe it could be a, I don't know, Z colon or E colon or whatever, indicating that, uh, that the link file was in fact pointing to removable storage. There is also some more link information that uh, refers to the volume where the file is stored uh, and that's down here on volume information so you can see the drive type in this case fixed storage media but it could also be a network drive or use or re removable storage media you see the serial number which we can use uh, if it is a, if it was stored on a removal media we can use the serial number to cross reference uh, if we found to actually uh, determine what USB device it was stored on and so on and so forth so that's that. Uh, before we move, uh, before we end this lecture, I also want to show you how you can look at link files in Autopsy. So I'm doing a context switch into another software, um, and in Autopsy there is an ingest module that you can use to extract recent document information. So I'm going to go through that in the Autopsy demonstration. But basically, what happens is that Autopsy looks for all link files and outputs some uh, some standard information. So these are all the link files that were found on this um, on this actual drive. And I just want to show you two of those. So I'm looking starting with this one called to do LNK. And now actually Autopsy doesn't do a fantastic work at interpreting link files because the m most important information that we find here is uh, the path, which is where the original file was located. 
um, and actually in my opinion that's that. We also have a date time which in my opinion is uh, a little bit hard to interpret because I'm not really sure if this is the modified or the, cre the created timestamp. So if I find interesting links here I would actually extract them and, and parse them through the LECMD that I just showed you. But I also want to show you this one here called Thoughts. So here there is a link file called thoughts.rtf and here you can see in the path that it points to uh, an icon. And if we have a file uh, lo located on icon-thoughts, that's quite a good indication that this is actually a link file uh, pointing to a file that was stored on removable, uh, on removable media. And that might be an indication that we should look for some removable media. Okay, that was all for the link files, a very good source of forensic information. Um, and in some cases, like child explo exploitation, in, uh, in drug cases, in, uh, in fraud cases, the file names alone can actually contain quite a lot of interesting information. And one reason why you should look at this is that if we just do a quick analysis of the path here, I mean, what we see here is a lot of parts to stuff that a computer has actually been using. Uh, so for instance we can see here that there is a path to C users something something uh, my Bitcoin address and this is an indication that this is a file path that we should look, look in. And if we take, uh, take a look at a more uh, weird example we have this one called uh, Goobs uh, Dot, uh, dot LNK. Sorry for that. And we can see here that the path is actually uh, C colon Windows help support stuff. So using those link files is a nice way to find information that a user may have hidden in weird file path where you wouldn't normally expect a user to put files. So that's that on link files. When we get back, we're going to discuss, discuss most re recently used, uh, but that's a topic for another day. Goodbye.